Okay, people, this camera's got to go. <laughs> Seriously, man. <laughs> Don't breathe! Too many years of energy weapons going through my yard. It's fried my camera. Anyway, it is April 16, 2019, one day after court. So, in a nutshell, people, I met this little teeny weeny woman. <laughs> Smaller than me. <laughs> she was so tiny. And uh, at the courthouse, right? And she was going on about talking about her situation. And, you know, Tisha and I, we told her about her situation. And anyway, she, she had her hair. Uh, triple braided, right? You know, you've seen those before. They're really nice. They're really nice braids. Anyway, she was the cutest, sweetest, prettiest little woman that I've ever met in a long, long time. And she goes, God is good. You know, 10 years. I've been here 10. Don't breathe. I've been here 10 years. Oh my God, this camera. Don't, don't stop. Stop. <laughs> and, and I'm still at it. And God is good. And Amen. And I said, you know, that's what my next video, I want to make sure I say, God is good. With Tisha in the background, she's not up here right now, but she'll be like, amen. So every now and then, if you hear me say, oh, God is good, and Tisha goes, amen, that's where it stemmed from, right? You know, to put a, to put a, you know, to, 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 to relieve some of the pressure that you feel while you're in a courthouse that, you know, it's just... Anyway, the father didn't have a lawyer. For some reason, he doesn't have a lawyer now. Not my business. And uh, so everything's now being put off. We have to go back in May, set a new time for a trial. He wanted Amari to be with them for the week, and we get him for the weekend. And he was trying to wheel and deal with my lawyer. <laughs> On that deal, <laughs> my my lawyer was playing double fiddle because <laughs> his lawyer he didn't have a lawyer, right? So it's like, <laughs> <coughs> but it's like no shock to me, people, because I went through all that nonsense with Andre, <laughs> so I'm a little desensitized to the whole process, right? <laughs> and highly educated in many areas in terms of the pros and the cons within the system itself. In a in a in a modern, so-called court system, modern day court system, right? So anyway, God is good. She says if you say it enough times, after a while, you know, it's like taking that positive energy and just reinforcing it, and you know, eventually it it brings it brings about more positive things, right? So I'm not particularly promoting any particular religion. Right, because God has many names for many people. So anyway, God is good. <laughs> Amen. And uh, what you're going to see next is me out in the yard after I got back from court, because I expected four days of grueling going back and forth. We had all the daycare set up, you know. We had the witnesses set up. Everybody, four people, four people took days off of work to come to court for this the next four days. So all four people, right, like phoned and made rearrangements for their, you know, to not work that day. Then we had other people that were going to not, you know, go to school for a day or work just to sit in the pews, right, in, in, in on the benches, right, and just give shimei moral support. It wasn't so much about us as you know, Markane, Tisha, and myself as a family, as it was supporting Shimei not being there. Right? Because they all knew Shimei. They were there for Shimei and Amari. <clears throat> and then us. Right? So, for that, I really do appreciate it. It was like eight people over a course of four days that would have been in and out of there. And that's who we knew was coming. That's not including who they were bringing. And then, of course, you know, we made arrangements for four days of daycare for Amari and uh, Andre. So those arrangements have to be 
canceled and obviously some people were expecting to make money so that was a disappointment for them right and I don't know people I just went out in the yard when I got home pretty much because got to get up on it right I got to clean up this yard I told you what I wanted to do this year in terms of getting all the bricks laid you know getting getting some of the unnecessary unnecessary miscellaneous wood that either I use it or I'm going to compost it right and have half what I have in the yard down to half at least if not more by the time fall comes right my problem is is I want to build things but because I'm not a man and I'm not a carpenter and I'm not very strong I can't build the things that I want to build and when it comes time to pay for things to build I don't have a problem with that providing you know I have that little extra money to pay people to do that kind of stuff right and uh, so over the course of the next several months I know that at some point somebody's gonna get paid to do something in this yard that's just the way it works around here right the people that have worked in my yard in the past will wander on by they'll ask me if I have any work and chances are I'll have a little bit of work right so hopefully through that process we'll get some things done and out of the way and um, I don't know people I'm not gonna sweat it I'm kinda tired and worn out as usual but now that this court stuff has kind of been dealt with, I can now, what do you call it, start putting my energies back on Andrew the Dragon, wink, wink, right? <laughs> you know, dig out my glitter, right? And uh, what do you call it? Take that battle back on, you know, get back up on the bandwagon on that one and follow up with CIBC Bank as I put together my lawsuit for what happened to Shemaine. Right? Provincial government can't get mad at me. I'm not the employees to Fraser Health Authority. Right? It is the provincial government job to monitor the employees of their health authorities. That's why they brought in the health authority. was for the health authority to monitor the employees. But right now, it's just a free-for-all and anything goes. So with that said, I am going to get off this now. I'm not sweating too much about... I want to get... You know, I, I want to... I, I want to bring in some more substance into these videos at least for a little while but I I have to get up into the paperwork before I can do that in terms of you know general information that you can hear it and you can just kind of put it in the back of your mind and be aware right you know be aware of certain things like for example before I get off um, and speaking of Shemaine you know and uh, and actually I did want to say a couple of more things here so I'm just gonna spit it out um, what do you call it I've met two individuals, well, I haven't met. I've, I've been in, you know, in communication with via through a keyboard, right? Where one person has expressed, because I talk about Shimei. I talk about Shimei on social media. Obviously, I have a Facebook page. You know, I do videos, right? You know, I myself haven't changed as to who I am. And we're not going to go down that road. So anyway, this particular person you know, it, it, it can somewhat relate to what I'm saying as to what happened to Shemay in a different district, right? Didn't happen in Surrey at the Surrey Memorial Hospital, Surrey Memorial Hospital, but it happened somewhere else in Vancouver at a different hospital in relation to their loved ones having their bodies mistreated as they go into the system under a crisis situation. In a nutshell, it, and I'm thinking, oh, and I said to myself, I said to the person, I said, well, I, I wish I could help you, you know, in terms of, I don't know how to help you because when you're in a position like mine, there's no one to turn to because, first of all, people think you're talking nonsense, many of them, and the ones who don't want you talking about it because it, they don't want to expose, obviously they're going to you know, run with that one, you know, she's just a lunatic, right, she doesn't know what she's talking about, I'm the professional, <coughs> so you find yourself going around and around and around, and, uh, you know, depending on your circumstances and your level of education and all these other things, you know, it can be quite difficult to wrap your head around it and fight back, so with that said, you know, being that I'm already in the fight, 
got war room one, got war room two. This obviously is a war room, so we'll call this one three, right? Really, this is my office, but besides that point, um, you know, I feel like I have a need to offer help because as in the past, it's really unfortunate that she may has to show the way, but if that's what it's going to take to bring change to the province of British Columbia, Canada, that's what it's going to take. Right, because I'm not going to settle for less in terms of my daughter, no justice, no peace. And right now there is no peace. And justice, again, comes on multiple levels here, first to me. So I offer to, you know, have coffee or, or a tea or something just to connect with that person. For that person, not for myself. I'm not looking for a story. I'm not looking to do videos. I'm looking to do outreach and to console someone that uh, quite possibly has suffered at the hands of a negligent healthcare system. Right? And being that I'm already in the fight and I'm getting back into that paperwork, if I'm already prepared by the time I, if and ever, when I meet this person, I'd be able to give this person some um, logistics in terms of, like, mm, those statues and legislations and, you know, and all this other crap that these, the public union sector likes to hold against us, right, and, and control us and manipulate us for their benefit. I'll be able to poke some holes in that. And the first place is um, in terms of this uh, right to death or right to life. I, I, I don't know how to, I don't know what the terminology is. I do, but I don't. And that's where I have to do my homework, people. Because what's happening is the healthcare system, multiple doctors, <laughs> it's not just one doctor. We can't blame one. Birds of a feather flock together. Right, are using um, brain dead um, status as a cue to proceed forward with legal and illegal organ harvesting. It buys them time to make that decision, right? Because um, of the authority that's wrapped around the healthcare system and our conditioning as we're growing up as children to to um, obey and bow down to that authority figure. And in this case, if bodies are going into the healthcare system, it's almost by default that the body becomes the property of the corporation and the corporation and its employees will do as they see fit to that property. They don't see it as a person. They don't see it as a well, they see it as a body, as a piece of property. Everything else mixed in there, in terms of the, um, there's a n name for it for the for the for the for the, uh, the emotional and the intellectual and the, and you know that kind of stuff, right? That's just that's just a charade, right? That's just plays on your emotions. That's just there to fool you in terms of the social workers coming in and saying, oh, you know, the family needs more time and, you know, they have to be prepared to let the girl go, right? So we'll just give her a couple more, give them a couple of more days to, uh, you know, make final arrangements and say their goodbyes when in fact that person's already been dead for nine days. You said your, your goodbye nine days ago, so why the hell is it still on a machine to say goodbye? Whether it's nine days or two days, because that's the slippery slope that I have to bring to the surface, people. Because if what they did to my daughter in an eight-day period, they could simply do in a one-day period and get away with it. For an unsuspecting family that's uneducated and not aware. Right? So. And the second thing is, so that invitation is open. I'm, I'm willing to do outreach for somebody that feels that there's a misjustice in there and they don't know how to sort it out. I might be able to help them to sort it out just with my own experience to be able to be a sounding board. Or I may be able to come with some actual information within certain legislations with the duty of care to the patient. <laughs> Or I can hand over that little piece of paper and say, here, you, you go do what you want with it. Now at least you've got some, some ammunition in your hands, right? And the grieving process and, and that constant turmoil of never knowing. You know, no justice, no peace, right? Of never knowing. Always having unanswered questions, right? 
it's not a good way to live your life. It's like living in the Congo in the bush waiting for the militia group to show up to chop off your arm and then drag you off into another bush and chop off your fucking leg and then leave you there and expect for you to defend yourself. Right? It's just the chopping off is being done in different ways. And then the other thing is, and I always take this stuff with a grain of salt, people. Like, I've been working on the nonprofit for a very, very long time. <clears throat> 20 years later, trust me, I am tired. I have not wanted to be the president for a very long time, but for some reason, I'm still stuck with that process. So, of course, you know, I do outreach. I suppose if I wasn't the president, I'd still do outreach. But besides that point, I've came across another individual that seems to have some um, skills, I guess you could say. Uh, I'm thinking in the realm of um, website design. That's that's what I'm thinking, right? It hasn't been confirmed yet. So, um, and I'm and I and I'm and I and I got the impression that they're they're wanting to help with building up the website, right? Which would be good for the nonprofit because the nonprofit has to be severed from me. It has to move on away from me, All right? So the more people that start to participate within the nonprofit in an area that needs to be built up without me per se, right? The better it is for the nonprofit. However, because we don't have a, um, a proper and consistent um, accountant to do the books on time yearly, it kind of stunts the growth of the nonprofit because even if I was to build in a $300,000 fundraiser, people, there would be no one there to manage the fucking money. And trust me, as much as I like the idea, I'm too tired to sit there and count fucking pennies. And if we're going to do books, we need to count those pennies, right? And they need to be listed and they need to be logged. And if it goes into, um, you know, paying here, and you know how that stuff works, right? Money comes in, money goes out. Who's going to log all that? I don't have the energy to do that, people. I just don't. I've done it in the past. I showed the way. And basically, I, you know, I don't even collect member dues because I don't want to do the bookkeeping. It's not that I don't want the foundation to have the money. It's simply that I don't want the bookkeeping. I can't do it. I'm going blind. I can barely see this. And then when I get down and having to do fine numbers and I do everything by longhand, then it's just it just gets to be too much for me and my eyes really begin to bother me. And yeah. So we'll see what happens with that one. Like I said, I take it with a grain of salt. I've had people offer to help me before. You know, sometimes okay, not sometimes not, right? And um Other than that, I'm working on the yard for the next several months, hardcore. I told Tisha, I got to be outside three to four days a week, preferably five, but I'll probably do three to four. I'm already starting to buff up, although it's not buffing up. I think I'm suffering from false pregnancy. <laughs> I do. <coughs> Tisha and I, we've noticed that I've been like plumping up, like plumping, like my breasts are getting plumpier. Things are plumping up on me. Right? I'm like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> you know, the belly's plumping up. You know, right? <laughs> I think it has to do with all these babies around me. <laughs> you have to remember, people. I had five babies. I breastfed for over seven and a half years. All my kids grew up in traditional, fold your own cloth diapers. All of them. <laughs> right. So that's like over seven years of diapers, right? Washing by hand in a machine, right? And uh, breastfed for seven and a half years between all five of them. And with these babies in the house right now, I'm like starting to plump up. So it's kind of funny, really. And, uh, and now that I'm going to be in the yard, you know, my muscles just naturally get more, what do you call that? refined I suppose but this eye pressure and the and, and you know just the what goes on with my head and everything is still like that and it's 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 uh, consecutive it doesn't stop mornings are the worst when I get up because my ears are screaming and because my head's been laying down you know it's not good so anyway I don't know I'm 58 years old right now Hopefully, hopefully, over the next course of this year, 2019, 
things will get better for the nonprofit, at least for the nonprofit, right? My days are numbered. I'm already halfway through my life. The nonprofit can carry on long after I am gone. So just keep that in mind. And, uh, you know, if that person that wants to maybe meet with me downtown for coffee because they're struggling with thoughts in their mind as to what happened to their father, right? And they're having a hard time connecting some dots. Well, you know, my sympathies go out to you because more than likely it's not your imagination. Okay, people. I'm doing this on purpose. Honestly, this camera is toast. So if it gets all whatever, I'm even thinking about just buying a cheap one <laughs> just to replace the hassle around this one. So anyway, I'm outside now. It's April 15, 2018, as you can see. I'm reflecting on things as I'm uh, uprooting the dirt and taking out what I don't want. Right, this is a planter box that I uh, made back in the days with Souk, right? If everyone remembers Souk. Had me out here for what, 78 days, people? <laughs> right? It was over a year. <laughs> well, it was, yeah, it was a, like more than 78 days. Not including weekends. <laughs> anyway, the dirt in here is really, really nice, actually. I'm pretty, pretty pleased with it. So um, what I'm going to do is after I'm, I just wanted to show you where I am. I just wanted to, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the yard now, right? In the front. I'm in the front today. And I'm, I'm starting to, t you know, get ready to plant and make sure the weeds don't get out of control, right? Take out the things that bloom too many flowers. <laughs> I don't know where it comes from, but it comes from somewhere. I have a population of, the seeds uh, populated this year. I have seeds all over the place because I never really went and cut anything out, right? So, then after I'm done this, then I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna be working on over the next several months, right? Get this pond in, get rid of all these buckets. I'm thinking strategy. Take out the buttercup. Buttercup is such a nuisance. Such a, such a nuisance. So, today was court. I was supposed to be in court today, but obviously I'm in my garden now. And uh, I guess Samari's father didn't have a lawyer or something. So, we have to go back on a different day in May to set another court date for a trial. And then, uh, yeah. So it's everything as is currently in terms of Amari having his three day a week visit as uh, we continue to participate in that process, right? So I take out the roots as much, much as I can, just taking out things that I don't want in here. Yeah, I wanted, I brought out the camera really to show you what I'm going to be doing for the next, well, till fall really, right? But if I get four or five days in a week for a couple months, that would be good. But I don't know if I can do that many days in a week. In the old days, like the good old days, I could, right? I did. What will happen is, as the weather warms up and people see me out here and they think, you know, the, there will be one or two people that will probably come and ask me if there's some work that they can do. So I might, I might be able to do that, right? Get a few people out here doing a little bit of this. I, like I need, I need some, some brickwork done, right? Stuff like that. I'm going to start getting, oh, this is the one I came in for. This is, this, this plant is, that's not the way the leaf looks, but this plant you can eat this plant, and it's an infesting next door. I asked the owner 
next door and one, one of the tenants, if they're not going to use the land over there to plant food or anything, if I can, right? Just so that one, you get extra food, you know, more the merrier, right? And then um, that marrow plant that I just showed you won't overtake the yard. Like, I'm in a panic just watching it grow. Seriously. <laughs> right? So I might end up getting a little more of a garden plot here pretty soon, but we'll see. No pressure, right? Hold on a minute. I'm going to go like this, and I'm going to show you what I have to do. Speaking of no pressure, and hopefully this camera, I think, I think it's okay. I think. I'm trying not to move too fast. I think the coloring is okay. Uh, I think it's for videotaping okay. Can't see. Let me go in the shade. We'll start in this corner. Where am I? Oh yeah, I wanted to feature my my trees. Right? This is growing nice. <clears throat> I never got a chance to come out here and cut anything down before winter. <clears throat> this is um this one right here. I'm not sure if it's gonna live. It looks like it did it looked like it took. I can feel it right. Sorry, I'm burping. I can feel it right here too, right? This was a little walnut tree from one of the wall black walnut from one of the smaller black nuts. And it was over there where the raspberry bush is. And I transplanted it into here and I kind of broke it and disturbed it in terms of it, the, the stalk feeding off of the nut, right? Because it has to do that for a couple of years. Anyway, long story short, I wasn't too sure if it was going to catch based on that fact, right? But I think this thing is like a couple of years, three years old now because I actually cut it down once before not realizing what I cut it down. And then last summer I came across it and I realized what it was. And I dug it out, but when I dug it out, I broke the shell. And I kind of disturbed its, you know, feeding source, right? So I wasn't too sure if it was going to live. It looks like maybe it is. So that really makes me happy. This, I can't remember. <laughs> I'm not that good at trees yet. I can't recognize it. <laughs> and then, of course, i got to do all this crap, right? So, the big pond, this is it. This, this is what's going to happen over the next couple, two, three months, if not sooner. Because when I come outside, I'm going to start taking everything out. I'm going to dig a bit deeper hole. Then I'm going to start emptying up this how I figure I'm going to tackle it. Then I figure I'm going to take the buckets of sand, fill it up into the hole, and then we'll work on the outside. And then when we're ready, we'll just take from what's in the hole and put it up on the sides of the um, pond before we lay down the liner. Right? And... As I'm doing that, I'm going to start clearing this walkway so I can start laying down these bricks because I have at least three of them. So one, two, three, perfect. And then I've got some broken ones. You see there, right there, you can see full, right? One, two, and there's one right there, right? So I'm going to do that. <clears throat> and like I said, get this out over the next week or two and then start emptying out these buckets. Just dig the hole a little bit deeper, that's all. And then it clears out the buckets. Obviously, this is still from the little house. I had it covered, so I was hoping the city wouldn't bother me. And they didn't. So now, I, today, I'm going to empty out the buggy and put everything over there. And then we're going to probably, well, I am with my daughter. We're going to uh, put this online again. I did it last year. But this year, we'll put it on Facebook and on Craigslist. And we'll see what happens because I don't really want to make too many dog houses. I don't mind making a couple, but I'm not in the manufacturing business right now, right? Uh, <clears throat> obviously my lovely mulch. So I start working on that. So as soon as this in here is, um, what is it called? Weeded out. I take a few of those branches, just cover it up until I'm ready to plant something in there, right? Obviously clean it up. I got my new stump, so I'm gonna replace it here. Something wrong with this pond. I don't know. Uh, the raccoons knocked in some rocks and shit. You can see um, it going up and down, up and down. It doesn't really seem to go past this point, but I think there might be a tear in here, or it's leaking somehow, some way from from the tub itself, right? Because that's just some homemade 
filter that I made for this thing for myself, right? That I, you know, did on YouTube with the lava rocks on layers with the water running down it, right? So, uh, anything that really grows in here in terms of algae always relates to the sun, right? And leeches live in that. <laughs> Yeah, clean up in here. Do you see how all the seeds have propagated? That's what you call it. Propagated. Everything propagated. <laughs> it's all propagated. Now, see, I couldn't even come in there and take that out last year. Right? So anyway, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm going to be doing. People. How's this camera? And, uh, I guess it's just one day at a time right now, right? So I'll be back. Peace. Oh yeah, I forgot people I'm featuring my trees here. <laughs> yeah, do you see that? That is a horse chestnut, two years old. Here's another one. All right, quite cool, really. And then we've got another horse chestnut. You can see that. Another horse chestnut. This is a black walnut. All right, the stalk has gotten thicker. And then, when they tore down that house over there, I rescued some honeysuckle, but honeysuckle was hard for it to grow. So this one managed to survive. This is looks like horse chestnut again. This is a Norway maple. It goes all the way up. It's getting taller every year. Here's another horse chestnut. Probably had honeysuckle, but it didn't catch. This is a nice black walnut coming in. And if you notice the pot, so it will be able to stay there for quite a long time. That's the bird nest from uh, the little house. And then we got a little bit of honeysuckle here, but this got broke because of the stuff over here, but that's okay. I'll just cut it off. It should be okay. Hopefully it will reroot itself. So we got those ones, and then, yeah, and those are the blueberries. What's this? Oh, nothing. This is actually um, fig, but I don't think fig likes to stay in a pot. No. Not too many out in the front. All right, remember last year I planted them and I got raided? All right, rated what, of a hundred nuts? <laughs> Spent three days planning them and somebody came in and raided them. Um, one night, it wasn't a squirrel, people.